The NTT IndyCar Series looks set for a historic season in 2020. New faces, larger grids, new ownership for the series, new safety devices, and some stars from across the world of motorsport playing guest starring roles. Whether you're a new fan just checking out the series for the first time, or someone who is old hat, this guide will help prepare you to watch IndyCar in 2020. This is a bandwagoner's guide to the 2020 NTT IndyCar series. The biggest news of a news heavy off season was that team owner Roger Penske purchased both the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the IndyCar series from the Holman George family. Roger Penske does not buy businesses that fail. And if previous history is any indication, Penske ownership will see to it that the series finally gets the marketing, promotional, and management dollars it is so desperately needed for such a long time, and hopefully will lead to a healthy IndyCar series going well into the future. While the series schedule remains largely the same from a track perspective, there is one major change from 2019 to 2020. The two and a half mile oval at Pocono has been replaced by the seven eighths mile oval in Richmond, Virginia, that previously hosted IndyCar racing all the way up until 2009. This change leaves only two super speedways on the schedule at Indianapolis and Texas. IndyCar has made a major step forward in terms of safety this year, introducing the Red Bull Advanced Technologies designed AeroScreen. The new cockpit protection device combines both a Formula One style halo and a jet fighter style windscreen and will hopefully provide nearly entire protection for the driver's head in terms of an accident where debris could get into the cockpit. Despite being a safety advancement, this change may affect the dynamics of the vehicle, including 50 pounds of extra topside weight on the cars, which will affect setups. An extra pit crew member will have to go over to the wall to remove tear-offs, potentially adding penalties or other complications to a race weekend. In terms of the on-track product, the aero screen is one of the biggest stories going into 2020. IndyCar is expecting some of their biggest grids in years, with upwards of 28, 29, or possibly even 30 cars starting races outside of the Indianapolis 500. And as for the Indianapolis 500, while only 33 cars can start the race, there's a possibility of as many as 37 entries going for those 33 spots. So without any further ado, let's meet some of the competitors that will take part in this year's NTT IndyCar Series. It wouldn't be a bandwagoner's guide if we weren't talking about the McLaren IndyCar saga, and it took another turn last year as the Aero Schmidt peterson team was bought into by Zach Brown of McLaren, forming a new partnership which is now known as Aero McLaren SP. And they've already begun taking risks because both of their full-time drivers have not participated in a full season of IndyCar racing, and one of them is a true rookie, and you're looking at him, Oliver Askew. Now, that being said, Askew is incredibly talented and proved that last year by taking the Indy Lights Championship. Joining Askew in the 2020 rookie class is Spaniard Alex Polo who brings super formula experience to IndyCar racing. But that's not the only thing he's bringing from Japan. He's also bringing a new partnership with Dale Coyne Racing, including Team Go, which is an incredibly famous team. Perhaps their most famous win was the 2004 24 Hours of Le Mans, which they won overall with an Audi R8. Completing a trifecta of rookies going for the coveted Rookie of the Year status is Renus VK, who drives for Ed Carpenter Racing. And get your orange shirts out because the Dutchman looks to surprise in this year's series. He was the runner-up to Askew in the Indy Lights Championship last year and looks to continue that rivalry in the IndyCar series. Another of the true rookie drivers in IndyCar this year getting an opportunity for the first time is Dalton Kellett, who will be driving for the legendary A.J. Foyt on a part-time basis this year. Kellett is the most experienced driver in the history of the Indy Light Series. However, he will not be in the seat of an IndyCar on a race weekend until practice starts for the month of May in Indianapolis. The famous 14 will be split for the remaining races by two legends of the sport. 
Tony Kanan will take the five oval track races on the schedule for this year in what he's calling the TK Last Lap Tour, as this it was intended to be his final full season of IndyCar racing, but funding could not be secured. So, Tony will race only the ovals. That being said, Tony is still one of the best oval track drivers, as evidenced by his performance in the 2018 Indy 500, leading that race for Foyt Racing, as well as his brilliant third place at Gateway last year. Taking the 14 for the first few races of the year, including his adopted hometown of St. Petersburg, is Sebastian Bourdais, who was unceremoniously let go from the Dale Coyne Racing Organization in the offseason. He will be looking to extend his incredible race record at St. Petersburg. He's won two of the last three years at the race and will also be looking to help AJ Foyt Racing get their road racing program up to par with the rest of the teams in the series. Another driver who was unceremoniously dumped from his team in the offseason was James Hinchcliffe, who has landed at Andretti Autosport for three races this year, those being the Indy GP, Indianapolis 500, and Texas Motor Speedway. Despite being a limited schedule, Hinch will almost certainly take advantage of this great opportunity. And it's also a great opportunity for race fans because on the weekends that Hinch is not in the cockpit, he will be reporting from the pits for NBC Sports. Speaking of partial season teams, Dragon Speed returns to the series for a six race schedule and they will start the season with Ben Hanley driving at St. Pete, though it's unclear how many races the sports car driver will actually get this season. There's some rumors of some other drivers getting this opportunity later on. Another welcome return to the part-time IndyCar ranks is Dryan Reinbold Racing, which hasn't entered a race outside Indianapolis since 2013, but they're back for a partial season schedule which includes St. Pete, Indianapolis, and Toronto with Nazareth PA's Sage Karam. Another driver who's had to reduce from a full-time schedule to a part-time job is Spencer Piggott, who last year was full-time for Ed Carpenter Racing but was replaced by Renus VK for this year. He's got an opportunity with Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan, along with Citrone Buell Autosport. That team gave him an opportunity to start his very first IndyCar race in 2016. So it's a bit of a homecoming for Piggott, and he'll be looking to impress. Elio Castroneves fans, prepare yourself. This year's Indianapolis 500 may well be the last time you get to see him in an IndyCar and the last time he gets an opportunity to run for his fourth Indianapolis 500. He's already had his schedule reduced this year from two races down to one. He was originally scheduled to race in the Grand Prix of Indianapolis, but that seat has now gone to another driver. Enter reigning supercars champ New Zealander Scott McLaughlin. Now, McLaughlin already drives for Team Penske in the Supercars Championship and clearly endeared himself to Roger, who's compared him to Rick Mears of all people. McLaughlin has always stated his intention to one day race in America, but many thought because of his stock car racing experience in Australia, he would be heading to NASCAR for Roger Penske, but of course, Roger always has an ace up his sleeve and brought McLaughlin to Sebring International Raceway to test, where he impressed, then brought him to the open test at Circuit of the Americas, where he placed third on the board. He's scheduled only at this time to race in the IndyCar GP at Indianapolis, but several sources have reported that McLaughlin could be in as many as eight IndyCar races this year. McLaughlin is incredibly talented, as evidenced by so many of his incredibly jandle-filled supercars moves. This could be one of the stars of the future. I can't stress that enough. Speaking of stars, Fred Watch 2020 is finally a bit more clear. Fernando Alonso will race for Aero McLaren SP at least at this year's Indianapolis 500. And while on the surface a reuniting with McLaren seems uh, a foregone conclusion, Alonso left McLaren as an ambassador at the end of last year and looked set to take a seat at Andretti Autosport. Now for some reason, and many people have blamed a potential Honda interference, he was unable to do that. So he's returned to McLaren, but this is a much different McLaren team than the one he got bumped from the field at Indianapolis last year with. 
And there seems to be an indication that Fernando Alonso will not only just run the Indianapolis 500 this year, at least adding the potential of racing in the Grand Prix of Indianapolis to hopefully try to iron out some of the bugs that plagued the team last year and made them miss the Indianapolis 500. In terms of the U.S. market, no star shines brighter than seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion Jimmy Johnson. And it seemed almost unfathomable a couple of years ago that Jimmy Johnson would be pondering attempting IndyCar races, and yet here we are in 2020. Now, it's unlikely that Jimmy will run any races this year, but he does have a test scheduled for April 6th at the Barber Motorsports Park with Aero McLaren SP. The important bit of reporting that has gone on from Adam Stern in particular is that Aero McLaren SP has acquired the number 48 to use in competition. They wouldn't do that if there weren't races planned sometime in the future. Whether that happens in 2020 or 2021, I think it's a foregone conclusion that Jimmy Johnson will be racing Indy cars within the next 365 days. Now, where could he race? Well, almost certainly, and he has stated this intention before, to race on the road courses. But Jenna Fryer has reported that there's a potential of short ovals, and Fernando Alonso implied that he could run super speedways, or at least was softening his stance on not running them. So could Jimmy Johnson run a ton of races next year or even this year in IndyCar? Anything is possible, and a wild 2020 could get even wilder with Jimmy Johnson spicing up the show. Speaking of champs, how about we talk about current IndyCar champion Joseph Newgarden, who will be looking to defend the one. He's won two of the last three championships in IndyCar racing and will be looking to make it three of four this year. The one place where he hasn't had a ton of success in the series as of recently is the Indianapolis 500. And it's almost as if a win there for Roger Penske is a requirement to stay employed at Penske Racing. So you got to think that both the championship and the Indianapolis 500 are priority 1 and 1A for the defending champion. One driver who has accomplished both for the captain is Will Power. However, in recent years, he has not had the consistency to be a championship threat. Will Power will be looking to correct that issue this year and look to crown himself champion once again. Rounding out the captain's forces this year is defending Indianapolis 500 winner Simon Pagino, who is yet another driver in the Penske stable who is capable of winning an IndyCar championship. And that certainly will be the goal this year, as well as becoming the first driver to go back to back at the Indianapolis 500 since another captain driver, Elio Castroneves, did it in 2001 and 2002. Charlie Kimball returns to the series on a full-time basis and is the only driver for AJ Foyt Racing that will contest the entire championship. Pato Award returns to the IndyCar series after leaving Carlin Racing mid-season last year to pursue a Red Bull Racing contract. However, he was released from that contract near the end of the season last year and returned to the United States to race for the new Aero McLaren SP. Award is incredibly talented and it will be very exciting to see how he's able to handle the pressure of a big team like McLaren. Scott Dixon is without a doubt this era's most legendary and prolific driver. He's only third on the all-time win list. The drivers he's behind are named AJ Foyt and Mario Andretti. Let's appreciate Scott Dixon while we have him. Felix Rosenquist was the top rookie last year, taking the Rookie of the Year honors. In his second year for Ganassi Racing, with experience on all the tracks under his belt, it will be interesting and exciting to see how his development progresses. Chip Ganassi Racing has essentially become Team Sweden, as they've added a third full-time car this year for Marcus Ericsson, who last year raced full-time for Aero Schmidt Peterson Motorsports as well as split his time as test driver for the Alfa Romeo F1 team. Ericsson is totally focused on IndyCar racing this year and because of the strength of Ganassi racing he is quite simply 
set to be one of the sleeper picks as someone that will be very strong this year. Another driver from that incredible 2019 rookie class is Santino Ferrucci with an extra layer of responsibility this year as he's been thrust into the position of being team leader at Dale Coyne Racing. Will the sophomore IndyCar driver be able to match his performances of last year? This will be a story to watch. Connor Daly will be participating full time in the IndyCar series, splitting his work between two different teams. For Ed Carpenter Racing, he will be running the road and street circuits as well as a one-off entry in the Indianapolis 500 in car number 20. Then, for the other ovals that are non-Indianapolis 500, he will be jumping into Carlin Racing's number 59 car. Now, it's worth noting that a driver in IndyCar has not won the championship for two different teams since 1951 when Tony Bettenhausen Sr. did it. Just a little stat for you guys there. The number 20 on the ovals will be handled by Ed Carpenter himself. As for the 59 car with Carlin Racing, on the road and street circuits as well as at the Indianapolis 500, the regular driving duties will be handled by Max Chilton. Confusing enough for you, or did I handle that well enough? I don't know. Speaking of Carlin Racing, they are planning on entering a second full-time car through the entire year, car number 31, though it's unclear how many drivers will actually participate in this car throughout the year. For St. Petersburg, they have chosen Felipe Nazar, former star of Sauber F1, as well as a current star in the IMSA prototype ranks. Now Nazar, as well as his teammate Max Chilton, showed incredible pace in testing at Sebring Raceway, which is the only track that the, te the teams are able to test for street circuit speed. So there's a potential that Carlin Racing could really turn some heads this year. Will Nazar run the entire season? That remains to be seen. It's worth noting that Formula 2 driver Sergio Sete Camara has also tested for the team and is rumored to drive in some races this year. Again, it's unclear how many different drivers, if any other different drivers than Nazar, will get opportunities in the 31 Carlin car this year. Believe it or not, Graham Rahal is entering his 14th season as an IndyCar driver. He hasn't won a race since doubling up at Detroit in 2017. His teammate Takuma Sato has been much more fortunate in recent years. Taku, in addition to winning the 2017 Indianapolis 500, scored two wins last year at the Barber Motorsports Park as well as an incredibly close finish at Gateway over Ed Carpenter. Finally, Jack Harvey and Meyer Shank Racing have made it to full-time IndyCar competition. The former part-time team was incredibly impressive last season, oftentimes outdoing the Aeroschmidt-Peterson team that they received engineering support from. This year, they will receive engineering support from Andretti Autosport, which certainly indicates that they will, believe it or not, have an even stronger year than they had last year. Speaking of strength, Alexander Rossi continues to prove year after year he's one of the strongest drivers in the series. Oftentimes, he may be too strong, stinking up the show, winning races by margins that would have fit in very nicely in the 1970s. That being said, Alexander Rossi is still pursuing his inaugural IndyCar Series Championship. Don't count him out to capture that elusive title this year. Ryan hunter Ray, despite being one of the most decorated drivers in the series, has been fairly quiet the last couple of years. Don't be surprised, though, if suddenly he's a championship contender once again. Zach Veach is entering his third full-time year for the Andretti Autosport team, and you've got to think that he is set for a breakout sometime soon. Without a doubt, one of the standout drivers of last year was 19-year-old Colton Herta who took a fledgling Harding Steinbrenner racing team to two victories at Circuit of the Americas and Laguna Seca last year, which is nothing short of incredible. For this year, the expectations may be even higher, as Herta and his team have been brought under the full Andretti Autosport banner. And with the full support of Andretti Autosport behind him, Herta 
may not just be a race winning threat, he may be a championship threat. And finally, Marco Andretti, returning for his 15th year for Andretti Autosport. One of the stalwarts of the series, like it or not. Andretti claims the fire is back and he's recommitted himself to driving this year. In fact, going as far as to humble himself and go back to driving school. No doubt, Marco has been spurred on from some of the successes of his younger teammates like Herta and Rossi. Whether his newfound motivation pays off remains to be seen. So that's a look at how the 2020 NTT IndyCar Series is shaping up. What do you think? Who do you think is going to be fastest here? Who do you think is going to be slow? Who do you think is going to surprise? Let me know down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe for more IndyCar content. I will be at the St. Petersburg Grand Prix as well as several other IndyCar races this year covering the series on the channel. So be sure to look out for that. It's going to be awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. We'll see you in the next video.